Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today we're having a look at grid aligned movement, where the player movement is restricted along a grid, but where we still want smooth movement between the grid cells. This sort of movement is typical in RPGs, but this code can also be adapted for tactic games or maze games. The project we're starting with has a set of sprites for each direction the player can move in, as well as a simple room with a couple tile maps. Before we start defining our movement logic, we first need to define some constants. Create a script and name it macro. This will hold our global information. We define the tile width and tile height macro to hold the size of our grid cells. We can now create our player object and give it a sprite. Add a create event and make it full screen. This will initialize the player. To handle when the player can accept input, we will define two states, idle and walking. Our player will start in the idle state. The state machine here is simple. When our player is in the idle state, it can accept input to start moving in a direction. When it's done moving in that direction, it returns to the idle state, ready to accept more input. We can now define a couple movement variables. XPaws and YPaws define the current location of the player in grid coordinates. The default X and Y coordinates will be kept defining the player in room coordinates. We initialize them to the current location of the player. X from and Y from define what position the player is moving from, also in grid coordinates. X2 and Y2 define the position the player is moving to, again in grid coordinates. So when the player is moving between two tiles, we have variables to define where it is coming from and variables defining where it is moving to. We can now define some variables to define the properties of the animation. Walk animation length holds the time in seconds it takes for our player to cross one tile. Walk animation time holds how far along the animation we are in seconds. Time to write some logic. We create a script and name it move. This will set our player to start moving in a direction. For now, it will only move our player towards the right. We first check that we are in the idle state. We then set our movement variables. We set x from and y from to x pause and y pause respectively. We set x2 to x plus plus 1 and y2 to y pause, which corresponds to one tile to the right of the player. We then set x pause and y pause to x2 and y2, the new position of the player. Finally, we put our object in the walking state. So now we set up our player to start moving. Let's write the code to animate it. We add a step event and make it full screen. This will animate our player walking. We check that our player is in the walking state. We update the animation time by adding dollar time over 1 million. If you do not want to use dollar time, you can use one over game speed instead. We then define t. t will hold how far along the animation we are, between 0 and 1. We set it to animation time over animation length. We now want to check if the end of the animation is reached. This is simply when t reaches 1. Here we want to reset our animation time, clamp t to 1 and set our state back to idle. Now you want to actually compute where in the world the player should be drawn. We will be using the lerp function for this. The lerp function will interpolate or mix two values based on an amount. By using it on two sets of coordinates, we can follow the line between two points. We get the grid coordinates of our player by using lerp on the previous position and next position, with t as a factor. Finally, we get the world coordinates by scaling that position with our tile dimensions. Before we can see the results, we need to accept user input. We add a keyboard event by right-clicking the code window, add event, key down, right. This event will attempt to move our player to the right. Here we simply call the move script as it is already set to move to the right. When running the project, we see our player object can move to the right, exactly one tile at a time every time you press the right key. Keeping the right key down will allow your player to move continually. However, we want our player to move in all four directions. Before we modify our script, we will define a couple constants. Go back to the macro script and add a directions enum. We populate it with the right, up, left and down values. We now want to define how these values correspond with the x and y axes. Each direction corresponds to a change in both x and y. We will call these components. Right has a positive change in x but no change in y. Up, however, has no change in x and a negative change in y. We will represent these changes using small arrays. The first value of the array will represent the change in x and the second value in the array will represent the change in y. Since our enumerator values are integers, we can hold these components in a global array named components. We define our components array for each direction and store it in the larger array. Unlike macros and enums, globals need to be called for them to be defined. 
we can do that by calling the macro script. A good way to do so is using the global pragma command. This will execute a small snippet of code when the game initializes. The code snippet we'll run is a simple function called to the macro script, initializing our global variable. We can now modify the move script to move the player in any given direction. The script will now take a single direction argument. We can get the x and y component of the direction using our global array. We now have an array holding the x and y components. We dereference the values into the variables dx and dy. We then modify our assignments to x2 and y2 to be x pulse plus our x component of the direction and y pulse plus the y component. Now that our script takes in direction arguments, we need to change our call to it in the keyboard event. We simply add directions.right as the first argument. Similar calls to the move script can be added to left, up and down keyboard events using the corresponding directions as the argument. Running the game now, we see our player move in all four directions, according to the key press. However, the sprite doesn't change and the animation keeps playing. Back in the create event, we first stop the animation from playing by setting image speed to zero. The sprite I'm using should reuse frames when animating, but the frames are not repeated in the sprite. Therefore, I define an array with the frame order to be used. The same order will be required for many 3-frame sprites available online, but is not always the case. I define the number of animation frames as walk animation frames. Then define the sprites for each direction. This is again done using an array to easily get the sprite from any direction. The animation can be processed in the step event. Add a line to set the image index. Here we multiply t by the number of frames to get the current frame, and then get the frame index from our frames array. The floor function is used to keep each frame the same length in time. In the move script, we can set our sprite index using the sprite array and the given direction. Running the game now, we see our player animating correctly. However, we have not yet implemented any collision detection. For our collisions to work, we will need two layers in our room, one for the ground image and one for just our walls. We give it the name walls. It's important this layer only contains wall tiles as it will be used to check collisions. Back in the create event, we find the wall layer using layer get ID and then layer name. We can then get the tile map it contains using layer tile map get ID. We will perform the collision detection in the move script. We check for a tile in the target direction and move all our code within the brackets. Of course we want to check no tile exists and so we negate the check with the not operator. Running the project now we see our player moving like before unless an obstacle is found in the way. Thanks to the components array we were able to check collisions in any direction with a single line of code. So this is it. As you can see, it is a pretty simple technique which allows for incredibly flexible movement. Uh, right now it's set up to move between uh, just adjacent tiles, but moving across any tile should be possible that way. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe to see more. Uh, let me know what you think about this new video format down below in the comments as well. And I'll see you guys next time for some more Game Maker tutorials.